So why are we here today? We want to collect your comments and suggestions. Uh, many of you in the audience today, and I, and I appreciate you very much, have provided us over the past few years with some great ideas and some great suggestions. And we've been able to modify the service and make it work better because of the input that you have given us and the, the fact that you take time to come down here and talk to us. That's very much appreciated. Proposed for June 2013. Uh, today we're at the public hearing, Thursday, April the 4th. Uh, there will be another one this afternoon between uh, 5.30 and 7.30. So if you have a, a friend or a neighbor that couldn't make it this morning, if you don't mind, let them know that we'll be here again this afternoon. Uh, Riverside, I'll start with that one, the Riverside uh, trolley changes. Basically, it would return the service to its original design operating between five points and a Jacksonville landing between 10.45 and uh, 2 p.m. It goes back to a lunchtime commuter with 10-minute frequency. What would change over what's occurring today, the blue would be the route as proposed that would remain. So it'd be the Jacksonville landing, it would turn around down here at the roundabout, come out Water Street, Riverside Avenue, down to Post, Turn here at Margaret, back up to Riverside, serving the Five Points area. It's the, the, the route that you're familiar with that's been out there for a few years now in one, one form or another. And again, it would operate with 10-minute service, 10-minute frequency between that, that period. Now, if, uh, if you currently travel into downtown where you see this gold or, or yellow color here, these, this segment would be eliminated. But there are service options available to you uh, starting with the Skyway system, uh, you can connect to the Skyway at Central Station. That's a one block walk from Water Street, one block north up to Bay. And that would be for continued service in the central downtown, stops at Hemming Plaza and Rosa Parks. Uh, if you're out in the, the neighborhood here, Riverside Avenue, Five Points, the West Side 12 and the R5 will continue to operate through Riverside Avenue just as they do today without any modification or any change there. So you do have that option. Uh, if you're traveling over to Noonan Street and on to Rosa Parks, then the West Side 12 and the R5 would continue to, uh, to work well for you. Again, uh, the segment that's coming off is this east segment down to the old courthouse. The north segment that operates up past the new courthouse, across Church Street, down by the St. James Building. This is Laura Street here. This is Adams. This is Jefferson, goes back across Forsyth and down Laura and then out again. So if you currently use the service and you're going up to the Hemming Plaza area, for example, to the St. James Building or the God Bowl Building or somewhere in this vicinity, uh, it's a one-block one walk connection to the Skyway system, which, as you know, is free. That will take you up to Hemming Plaza. And there's a, as most of you probably know, there's a station located at Hemming Plaza. The next proposed service change involves the West Side 12 out on the uh, northern end, or the, the, far, the forest uh, west northern end. What we're looking at doing, uh, ridership has kind of dropped off west of Edgewood here. This is 12th and Lewis Industrial Park. This is 5th Street. Uh, ridership has dwindled down to virtually, we can count them on one hand. Uh, just on the other side, if you look at east of Edgewood, we have Paxson and James Weldon Johnson Magnet Schools. They're both located fairly close together here. So the proposal here is to modify the end of the line of this route and run it, provide uh, service to both the Paxson and the James Weldon Johnson magnet schools. The, there would be some minor tweaking with the schedule, but it would generally run within a few minutes of what you're familiar with today. Edgewood. This is Edgewood down to Cassett. Okay. This is where it goes all the way down, 
comes across uh, Park Street down here, Lake Shore. It, it's the same thing that the route is doing today. There's no change at all planned for that segment of the route. Uh, the next one that we're looking at is the B9. Uh, as m many of you may, may know, there was a minor route change up here at Broadway recently where we extended the route over to Agmac Street and then back across Doolittle and then south down Lane Avenue to the Walmart located down here at 103rd Street. Uh, we have been experiencing some crush loading with the B9, so to help address that, we have enhanced the service with a 5.09 a.m. trip, which would operate from, uh, to town from 103rd Street, or the Walmart stop, and a 6 a.m. operating from Rosa Parks to 103rd Street. Also in the afternoon, we've got a 6 p.m. operating from Rosa Parks to 103rd. Now, what these trips are based on is the ridership trends that we see occurring. The JTA has a system on all of our vehicles that actually tracks the ridership by stop for every route. So we can, we can go in and look at this and see, well, on between uh, 5.30 and 6, we see that we may have uh, standing load crush loads occurring. And that's how we can determine where those additional trips need to be. As well as many of you will call us and, and tell us <laughs> and share with us the, 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 uh, the issue that you may be having. And, and we have, we have, I don't know if there's anyone in the audience that uses the B9, but uh, we have heard from several of our riders and we're addressing it with the proposed change that you saw there. On the K2, um, K2 is a very popular route. It's, uh, it's actually JTA's third best performer in terms of ridership. As you know, it operates from Amtrak all the way out to Jacksonville Beach. Um, it is, it had, we, back in November, the JTA added what we call a tripper. That's an additional bus. And they've been running for a trial period to see if they would be utilized, how they would, uh, how they would work. Well, the good news is they, they've worked really well. They've performed well. So those trippers are going to become part of the regular schedule for the K2. So the, and they would be the, a 7.20 a.m. and an 8.28 eastbound from Amtrak to Jacksonville Beach. So it would, it would actually do the whole entire loop here whole route. Uh, there's a 910 from Rosa Parks to Jacksonville Beach. There's a 1207 p.m. and a 435 p.m. westbound from Jacksonville Beach coming back in. And that's to help offset the midday crush loads and the afternoon crush loads that we were uh, experiencing prior to putting that service out. There are some other good things in the works uh, for the K2 in terms of amenities and shelters and things like that. So You'll be seeing some improvements uh, coming in a the, in the few months. For the CT1, it's just a minor uh, modification again to improve uh, one of the particular trips that's had some uh, problems with, uh, with on time. Uh, currently, it's a 5.30 trip departing Rosa Parks. Uh, that trip's going to be backed up by 10 minutes, so the new trip would, would depart at 5.20, and it would continue to run out to Marbonne, just like it does today. Uh, the next one I want to share with you uh, would involve the Beaches Trolley and the Community Shuttle. Now, what happens out here is at the end of the line, South Beach Plaza, where the vehicles turn around out there, they currently go into the target side first. They go underneath uh, or across JTB, and they turn in and go by McDonald's, and then they go by the target first. The issue with that is the sidewalk is all on the other side of the road. So what, uh, what's proposed here is simply just to reverse that loop. So you'd have the same level of service. You'd have the same general stop. It would just be across the street. And it would put you off where you'd step onto a sidewalk and make it a little easier for you to, to get to maneuver around. And we are looking at some amenit uh, customer amenity improvements there as well, which you'll see in the near future. Uh, next one. Uh, Golf Brook, this came from some of our customers that shared with us they'd like to see the Golf Brook and the Northside Community Shuttles match up at Gateway. So I'd like to see them come in. And I see some folks shaking their heads yes. So I, I take that as a, as a good sign. 
So, but we do want to know, uh, we really want to, we want your input on all these, but uh, there are folks who may not attend these meetings that we could potentially have a negative impact on them. So we would like to know what your thoughts are and how this is going to work for you, what your trip's like, uh, you know, what you use it for and those kind of things. But currently that's, that's what has been proposed. And again, that came from our customers that asked us to take a look at that. Uh, the next one uh, involves the L8. This is the last trip that um, is currently leaving Rosa Parks at 10.05 p.m. Again, customers reached out to us that ride the AR6 and the AR5 on their last trips coming in, and they're trying to connect to the L8 heading out, but they're just barely missing it. I, I, I see a lot of heads shaking yes, <laughs> so we're doing good. So um, what we're proposed here is just to modify that so those connections could occur and it would be a time connection so there'd be no problem with the vehicles being at the same time and customers making that connection. And I think if I understand we have on average uh, 10 to 15 that ride that last trip out. And that is the changes proposed for June 2013. We do appreciate everyone attending.